This is a letter that um, Hunter wrote me from Al Farm on December 3rd, 96, before there was going to be a, uh, a Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas film. This was just some early correspondence. Dr. Depp, I need some information. The Louisville gig has mushroomed into a huge historic event where the mayor will present me with the key to the city on stage at the Memorial Auditorium with a crowd of 3,000 and flutes playing and nymphettes dancing on perfect gold-strung harps and teenage winos fighting in the aisles for autographs and rape victims weeping helplessly on the fringes of the crowd. What the fuck? I told you I'd cure your rotten image in the Commonwealth, and here it comes in spades. By the time Christmas rolls around, you will be the second most worshipped and internationally celebrated Kentuckian since Muhammad Ali. Anyway, I need to know, one, if you are confirmed for this December 12th appearance in Louisville, which has already been announced in the local press, you and Zivon and George McGovern, and many local dignitaries. Warren will open with a new song he's written about escaped Negroes and the wisdom of interracial mating in the 90s, and you will join me in the final triumphant act of the night. After all the readings and odes and fugues and ancient whiskey tributes, we will sit on stage a la the Viper Room, and settle into a very weird and intense hour of grilling selected persons in the audience and calling the guilty to come forth and confess in the eyes of the mayor and God and his priest and his neighbors and all the TV cameras that they framed me for rape 40 years ago and they were wrong and I was right. And we will get the judge and the pervert Mr. Dotson to come up on stage and we will by God make a permanent statement for justice in the Chinese sense. Okay, where is your mother living, and will she attend? Can you get a Gulfstream 5 to get us to Louisville en masse, Burbank, Aspen, Louisville? If not, the University of Louisville will send you first-class tickets and have a suite at the Brown Hotel. We have six or eight suites, along with the presidential suite for me. These people are serious. This is turning into an otherworldly event. I'm reminded of Dernmutt's The Visit, a truly hideous tale of vengeance and merciless punishment for crimes of the soul, which is what we'll be faced with in Louisville. We will need to drive a few public 20-inch nails into the right people at the right time in the right place. The scene is set for beautiful public drama about right and wrong and what happens to the high life in bluegrass country when Billy the Kid returns more or less from the dead and settles many old scores. And never mind the fact that he might be certifiably insane. Ye gods, they're giving him the key to the fucking city and blotting his crimes off the books and canonizing a rapist with a violent drug-addled history and his terrible grasping fingerprints on the bodies of our wives and our neighbors and even our mothers sometimes. Oh, God, Henry, I feel I just can't stand going downtown tonight and feeling that horrible degenerate mock me and lay hands on me in public with the whole world watching and creeps giggling in the shadows about crazy things I don't even remember. Sweet Jesus, I fear it. What they don't know yet, of course, is that HST tribute organizers expect Kate to swim naked, incognito, in a black neoprene aqua tank full of random canvases and multicolored body paints, which will be pre-sold for $50,000 each and contributed to a fund for the restoration of the Hunter S. Thompson Memorial Cell in the Jefferson County Jail, where I was once incarcerated on bogus rape charges. I want to visit my old cell with a mob of TV cameras and the mayor, etc., and inspect the place, cell, and suggest state-of-the-art upgrades for at least my own cell and possibly that of the lucky occupant, whoever it is that day, and take him to the memorial auditorium with both our mothers watching and publicly rescue the poor bastard and never mind his crimes, I forgive him, and from now on, he is free on the street and given a sports writing internship at the Louisville Courier Journal and forced into the journalism business whether he likes it or not. We could even buy him the sports editorship of some obscure weekly in Harlan County, see how he does. Yes, sir, we're home free on this one. RSVP now today. Hunter. This is uh, 21st of May, 97, uh, realizing that I needed to get together with Hunter very, very soon uh, to steal as much of him as I could. Hunter, I suspect that at some point very soon we should get together if you have time, that is. I am here and could make the trip whenever. Hope all is well there with you. All is shite here. Looks like Moscow outside. Must shave my skull. Maybe you should do it. Well, maybe not. Anyway, I am here. 
Call or write or send. Respectfully, Colonel Depp. When we do any early uh, tests, wardrobe makeup tests, we took a, a Polaroid and I blew it up and I sent it to Hunter for his uh, whatever, blessing or something. So, accompanied with this letter. 28th July, 97. Hunter, here are a couple of photographs of me as you. I figured I'd send them up just to give you the basic idea of what I'm shooting for here. You. Hope you like them. Or maybe they'll make you go completely fucking nuts. In which case, I'm not there to witness the shitstorm, thank God. Either way, it's better to get it over with sooner rather than later. At least my intentions are good, so fuck it. Here we go. Things are going well here, I think. At least it feels like it. I suppose we'll see. I still can't believe that this thing is actually starting. There are three things that keep swirling through what's left of my brain. Number one, the bit that Lord Buckley said about the Marquis de Sade. He did what he did because he knew it was the wrong thing to do. Number two, Jean Cocteau said his approach to cinema was to cultivate what the audience doesn't want. And number three, what you wrote at age 17. Who is the happier man? He who has braved the storm of life and lived, or he who has stayed securely on the shore and merely existed? Can't escape them. They're somehow all too relevant at the moment. And then ultimately, res ipsa loquitur. Anyway, I bought this fucking ticket, so I guess it's time to take the ride. As you say, whatever's right. See you then, the colonel. Then he sent me, then he sent me a, a, a fax back, uh, just killing everything that I'd done. He said that the way I was standing was wrong, that the ears were wrong, that the eyes were wrong, that the glasses were wrong, and nothing was right and everything. And so I sent him this back, <laughs> which is, yeah, fairly to the point. Doctor, too late, fuck you, the colonel. And then he sent back, okay, go ahead and make an ass of me on the screen. Your turn will come, and history will not absolve you. Beware, doc. To which I sent this back on the 29th of July, 97. Hunter, please know that I am not in any way, number one, trying to make an ass of you in the film. Number two, turn you into some over-the-top caricature. Number three, fuck you over in some kind of cartoony way. Number four, treat this material like an episode of the Red Skeleton Show. Or number five, disappoint you or anything close to any of these things. I am doing my best to combine pieces of you, the you of today that I've gotten to know, the you that I've studied from some older video material, and the character from the book, Raoul Duke. We are at the beginning of this hideous ride and things are just starting to take shape. Only starting, so don't freak out. Give it and me a chance. The wardrobe is not where it needs to be yet, and I want your help with it. Fucking A. Understand that I am not a scumbag, and that all I want out of this thing is for you to be proud of the work and the film. Nobody's getting fucking rich here, believe me. I am an actor and can only do what I can do. I am not and cannot be you, but I can come pretty fucking close and will. This is my work. If you remember back about a year or so ago, I asked you if you were sure that I should be the actor to play you in the film. Your reply was yes. Well, it was at that point that I told you that if I was able to do it properly and did even a remotely good or accurate portrayal, that you most likely would hate me for the rest of your life. That is the risk I run here, and okay, fine, I'll deal with that. But don't ever think that you can throw a bunch of shit at me and expect that I'll eat it. You've got the wrong boy in this case. I respect and admire you greatly and hold our friendship in very high regard, but don't treat me as if I were a weaker animal because I will surprise you. Your work is yours, my work is mine. We need to remember that. Call or write or not. Yours in love and war, the Colonel. Yeah. And then he sent back some other letter that I can't find, but uh, it was basically, uh, it was basically telling me to calm down. I thought I was going to blow the gas. This is marked February 18th, 98, urgent, uh, on White House stationery. 
The White House, Washington, urgent. Colonel, things are getting weirder. The shit fairy just whispered some rumor in my ear about dumping the Rolling Stones off the Vegas film and replacing them with some other band. Jesus, it would be perceived as a perversion. And oh God, I'm having nightmares that someone is fucking with the music. I may have to come to LA to deal with it personally, unless I hear from you soon. I can't stand any more of this angst. Tell Pink to prepare the guest suite. You bet. Remember the words of President Nixon. We could do that, but it would be wrong. Right? Yes, sir. Nobody needs to act wrong at this point in time. Okay, Hunter. April 14th, 98. Colonel, happy birthday. Here's your present. I am not coming to Cannes. I can't handle the south of France at this time of year, and I don't want to bird dog your publicity. It would be wrong. But don't worry. I will be in New York for the premiere. Maybe a few days earlier. I have to be in Atlantic City on 5-15-98 to take delivery on my new motorcycle. And I also have a frantic June 1st deadline for the rum diary. Going to France for three Jim Connor style days would be a backbreaker. Ho, ho. Otherwise, how's the family? Kids these days are so dumb that they're dangerous to live with. You're lucky you haven't been set on fire from behind by some kid with a can of gasoline and a Zippo. It happens every day in the ghettos. In closing, let me suggest that you do everything in your power to prevent Gilliam from pitching this film as a drug movie about Hunter S. Thompson. I realize that we can't change the film at this point, but we can change the unconscionable emphasis of drugs and my name in the trailer and print ads. Shit, airports are hard enough for me now. The publicity splash for this film might make it impossible for me even to travel to New York. Anyway, my request has to do with the emphasis, not the content. What the hell? It's Mr. Gilliam's movie, not mine. He's the one who should be arrested and strip searched every time he goes through an airport. RSVP, Doc. Okay, this is my response to Hunter worming his way out of cam. April 15th, 98. Hunter, got your letter. No can? What does this mean? Does this mean you can actually live comfortably and guilt-free knowing that you've abandoned me to the pimps and hairdressers of the Côte d'Azur? You can actually sit back and rest easy while I am there, smack dab in the middle of the most awful people that ever walked this godforsaken earth, swallowing my own tongue trying to sell your movie? Whoring myself to make you money? Do I need to remind you that we are colonels of the dark and bloody ground? Is there some slimy secret about you and Benicio that I should know before this jug fuck gets underway? How do I proceed here? I'm going to have to run the whole fucking shebang alone and score crack for Gilliam? Well, okay then, so be it. I'll do the P.T. Barnum dog and pony show alone. You won't hear a peep out of me, pal, nope. I'll not whine and whimper. This is the perfect opportunity to tell the world the truth. Well, in fact, ladies and gentlemen, I've never actually read that weirdo's book or any of his other evil publications for that matter. The only reason I did this film was to spread the word of our Lord Jesus and to warn the world on the dangers of drug use. And I never even met that bully Thompson. I'm just so relieved that the whole stinking nightmare is over. I do look forward to the New York City premiere. Maybe we'd better reserve that top room at Pete's Tavern. How else will we get proper publicity for the film? Call me or me you. No longer an astronaut, Colonel Depp.